nothing. A race that maketh himself poor. Is giving out to God and giving out to God and giving out to God. He maketh himself poor, yet has great riches. He's saying that when you are faithful, when I'm faithful, when we are faithful unto the Lord, and we give what belongs to him, he says, then we make ourselves rich. Haggai chapter 1. In Haggai chapter 1, we're looking at verse 10. Haggai chapter 1. Read it there, let's read it. the verse before that and the verse after that from verse 9. Haggai chapter 1, verse 9, verse 10, and verse 11. In Haggai chapter 1, verse 9, here is what it says, telling us what we have to do and telling us what our responsibilities are in the sight of the Lord. It says, You look for much, and lo, it came to little. It said, You have been looking for much. And then eventually it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Have you noticed the way that, you know, people uh, react to their situations in life? If there's poverty, they say it's Satan. If there's scarcity, they say it's Satan. If there's a famine upon them in their family, they say it's Satan. If they have certificate and they don't have job, they say it's Satan. If they're working so hard and they have nothing, they say it's Satan. And God is saying here, no, this is not Satan. You are my people. I redeemed you. I gave my only begotten son so that you can be saved. I washed you in the blood of the Lamb. And I made a covenant with you. And I gave you so much. And you're not giving anything back. He said, that's why I did that to you. You're not showing gratitude, appreciation for what I've done for you. That's why I'm doing this to you. Look at verse 9 again. He looked for much, and lo, it came to little. When he brought it home, I, the Almighty God, did blow upon it. He said, it's not Satan, it's him. And as you look at your life and you see how you live, just, you know, you don't give your tithes and offering to the Lord. You don't give your time to the Lord. You don't give your skill to the Lord. You serve Caesar more than you serve God. And you serve Caesar with more, with more faithfulness more than you are serving the Almighty God. You serve your manager, you serve your director, you obey your manager, you obey your director. You are punctual, you give all the time. You pay your tax to the government and you ought to do that. But are you very careful and meticulous about that in your company? Because you know that they are going to check up. And they're going to find out if you're not paying your tax. And therefore, the things you want to import, you'll not be able to import because you don't have a relevant document. You do the right thing. All the things the government is asking, you have to do that. And yet, but you're not having the same, the same faithfulness and loyalty and commitment unto the Lord. It's a business you have exalted the people of the world above me. That's why I did blow over what you got. It says, why? Says the Lord. Because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man to his own house. He said, It's because you didn't honor me, you didn't honor my house, and because of what you have done, you have neglected my house. That is the reason why I blew upon everything you've got. Look at verse 10. Therefore, the heaven over you is staged from dew. And the earth is stayed from her fruit. In verse 11, And I called for a drought. Almighty God said, I'm the one that did it. It's not Satan. It's not demon. You know, all these people that do not read their Bible, and they're talking about generational curse, and, you know, the curse from the village, and curse from this, and curse from that. And the Lord is saying, you're looking in the wrong direction. Open your Bibles again, and see that it's me that did this unto you. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the, all the labor of the hands. Uh, that's why many people come to poverty because uh, they, they, have not, uh, they have not looked at this uh, problem to say we are at fault. We didn't give what we needed to give to God. We didn't give it to him. And because of that, that is the reason why this calamity and this poverty has come upon the people of God. But the Lord is in return. The Lord is in return. And as we return, the blessings of God will begin to flow again. I thought you would say, Amen. 
And you know, we're not just sending the word of God just to hear. We're not just reading just to read, but to read and do it. But to hear and do it. I want to recollect all our ways and to say, yes, this is the reason why all these problems have come upon me and upon my family. And then return unto the Lord. Let's come back to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, I'm reading once again from verse, I'm reading from verse uh, 7. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me. Return unto me. You know, it's not just to fold our hands and then to say things will change. Things will not change until we return. Oh, things will improve. Things will not improve until we repent that he wants us to give him the honor that belongs to him and the glory that belongs to him and the time that belongs to him and the treasure and the money and the tithes and the offering that belongs to him he says return unto me and i will return unto you says the lord of hosts but then ye say wherein shall we return that brings me to point number two the principle and the practice of the faithful wherein shall we return wherein shall we return it tells us where to return verse 10 bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse bring ye all the tithes into the stores what is saying everything i commanded and i said this is mine bring it back to me everything that belongs to me bring it back to me and we're talking about tithes and offering but you know it's not just tithes and offering i want to show you something in in second day, in second day, corinthians chapter eight second corinthians chapter eight i'm reading there from verse one second corinthians Chapter 8 from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wait, to understand and to know of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Paul, the apostle, writing to the Corinthian church, he said, I want you to notice something about the church in Macedonia. What did, what did he notice about them? How that in a great trial and affliction of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. You find something the natural about them. Number one, trial. Number two, you find affliction. And then number three, you find deep poverty. But all these people did not give any excuse because of our deep poverty. And because of our affliction. And because of our trial. We cannot do anything about this. We cannot offer anything to the Lord. You know, there are people that they say they are poor. And because of that, they cannot render anything to the Lord. Other people, I don't have any talent. I don't have any skill. I don't have any money. I don't have anything I can give to the Lord. Of course you have. You have. And you find people in the Bible days, in their poverty, they gave to the Lord. And it is because of that giving to the Lord, their poverty was taken away. Do you remember the woman? That was gathering sticks so that she'll cook the last meal and die. And then Elijah, the man of God, was saying unto her, was not saying to the rich, was not saying to the he likes, he was said to the people, uh, to this woman that had nothing. And then Elijah said, can you give me a copy? Hoping that you have been blessed with this powerful message. Our, bottom, our address is at the bottom of the, uh, of the screen. I believe you will join us one of this Sunday to worship together. Thank you. God bless you. Let us pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name and thank you, Lord, because of this powerful message. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will touch those people who are in need of salvation, those people who are in need of prosperity, those people who are in need of healing. And the power, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, they will give testimony because of this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Say one more time, say, oh. Oh, 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 oh.